Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. I want to do a video for you guys today on uh, poison ivy prevention. Um, I am highly allergic to poison ivy and I have been for most of my life. Um, if I'm exposed, I will uh, develop a rash within uh, three hours and I'll have blisters in five. Um, so it's something that I take uh, pretty seriously, especially with uh, all the uh, time that I spent out in um, the woods. Now, I know you guys are probably wondering, why is he doing a poison ivy video in the wintertime? It is the dead of winter here in Michigan, um, and there's a reason that I waited till the winter to do this video. Um, the worst cases of poison ivy I have ever gotten in my life were always in the winter. And the reason for that is, is poison ivy has vines and it has berries. And the poison ivy berries are like uh, poison ivy that's nuclear. I mean, that poison oil that is on um, poison ivy is super concentrated on those little clusters of uh, berries. And uh, poison ivy berries are a small off-white berry that looks like it's on um, a, a small stick sticking up out of the ground or snow. Um, it's very plain looking. Um, it doesn't have any real uh, distinguishing features this time of year other than it's that small off-white berry. That is something to be completely avoided um, if you see that. You don't want to, if there are short little uh, um, sticks or stems sticking up out of the ground with small clusters of off-white berries, you want to avoid that in the wintertime like the plague. And of course in the summertime, uh, poison ivy is much easier to identify. It's the three-leaf uh, glossy um, type vine that basically grows on everything and where we are here in Michigan it is particularly bad there is poison ivy everywhere and with as much time as I spent out in the woods it's really something I gotta watch and uh, two or three months of the year like between June and uh, August I just kinda avoid uh, the woods right where I'm at here as much as possible just because there's so high a uh, chance of uh, coming in contact with it even if you don't realize it and because that poison oil um, sticks to stuff you can walk through it on your boots not know um, come home take your boots off um, Touch your face, rub the back of your neck, boom, you got it on the back of your neck or your face or whatever that you touch because you can transfer it from, uh, you can transfer that oil from uh, your equipment, your clothing to uh, other parts of your body that don't have any protection and you're going to develop that rash. Another thing is uh, pets. Uh, dogs and cats, if they go out in the woods and they come back, they can brush up against it and they can give you a, uh, a bad case of uh, poison ivy. Um, Poison ivy can get infected, um, so when you're treating poison ivy at home, you want to almost treat that like a burn. You want to keep that as clean as possible and as sterile as possible with anything that you might put on it. Now, you might be able to get away with putting a little calamine or a little hydrocortisone on a poison ivy rash, but if it's a real bad case, you're probably on uh, your way to the doctor to get some uh, prednisone because... Uh, it doesn't go away so quick and if it breaks out into water blisters where you have uh, uh, small blisters or even large blisters on your skin that's going to take several weeks for that to heal even under the best circumstances so it's something that you constantly want to avoid and if there's a uh, a post uh, SHTF situation where you have to go out and forage and whatnot where you're not going to have uh, access to certain things you're going to need some strategies to um, kind of combat uh, poison ivy if you're foraging for firewood uh, or whatever and uh, the first thing that everybody should have in their packs anyway is a good pair of gloves um, if you're moving firewood or uh, you're gathering firewood for a small campfire or whatever, wear gloves um, if you don't know the area especially and you don't know what you're grabbing onto. And avoid vines. Um, if you see any type of vine growing on a limb or a log, maybe avoid that this time of year. If you can't identify exactly what that vine is, just stay away from vines in uh, general. Um, Typically, a poison ivy vine is going to be smoother than like a wild grapevine, um, so that's one kind of clue. Uh, wild grapevines kind of look uh, real specific, so uh, you can kind of tell them. Um, if they don't look like a wild grapevine, just stay away from it. That's your best bet. Um, I got some stuff lined up here on the bench that I'm going to show you guys uh, that I use, both commercial stuff and stuff that you can um, 
make yourself. Uh, and the first item that I've been using for quite some time is called Tech New. And uh, Tech New is a, uh, it's a cleanser because uh, the poison ivy oil, of course, is an oil, so um, certain cleansers will actually uh, strip that off of your skin. So like I said, I can develop a rash within three hours, so that's my window. If I know I've been exposed or if I'm doing something what might have exposed me, I just didn't realize it, like cutting wood or uh, trekking around or, you know, grabbing stuff out in the woods, you know, looking for morels in the spring, whatever. As soon as I'm done doing that, I'm going to come back and I'm going to take a shower and I'm going to wash off with Tech New. Um, but this is a, you know, this is kind of a, something to keep at your home or in your RV so uh, you can uh, wash up in a uh, bathroom afterward and you want to always pay attention to the stuff that's exposed your face your neck your hands your wrists um, that kind of thing um, for in your pack they have smaller uh, containers this uh, tech new extreme here this is uh, kind of a paste and uh, this works about the same way but this is much more portable the other is a liquid almost like a, a dish detergent so um, like I said, that's better for having back at your base camp or your uh, house or RV or whatever. And then something like this is better to carry in your pack because uh, if this gets squeezed open, you're not going to have that liquid get all over your pack or whatever. So this is my uh, travel version of the other Technu. And I've used this Technu a really long time and I've had really uh, good luck with it. I've still gotten poison ivy in different instances, but I've prevented a lot of cases of poison ivy too because I've washed up. But what if you can't uh, find tech new? What's the next thing? The next best thing that I've found over the years to use is laundry detergent. Laundry detergent is you know, designed to remove oil. Um, and I will actually take laundry detergent if I don't have tech, tech new. And I'll wash those same uh, exposed areas, hands, face, uh, wrists, necks, you know, any place where sweat, uh, where you'll sweat in the summertime, where that can uh, um, actually transfer that uh uh, oil to a different part of your body and cause that rash to spread. Uh, those are the places that you want to uh, concentrate on. But what if you don't have a, um, a commercial laundry detergent like Tide or whatever? The next is the commercial uh, a hard bar soap and not like an ivory. You want the harsh stuff because it strips the oil away. So this is a, a laundry bar like this is your next best uh, thing if you don't have um, um, a laundry detergent or uh, like the tech new and the thing after that is the thing that you can make yourself and that's a regular uh, lard lye soap like I was talking about here in a previous video um, this actually works quite well too the old timers would use this if they got into poison ivy um, they would uh, clean with this because this is really harsh so it's going to strip more oil away than a regular uh, commercial soap will so homemade soap is a good thing to uh, have uh, for uh, poison ivy prevention. But what if you get poison ivy? What are you going to do then? Um, you can't get to the doctor right away. Um, like I said, you want to keep it clean. Anything that you're going to put on that, um, like a hydrocortisone or Benadryl or Caladryl, that's not going to help heal that. All that's going to do is that's going to kill the uh, itching and the burning. That's going to kill the symptoms, uh, but it's not going to make the poison ivy heal any faster. Uh, one thing that I found that does work for me, and I was actually shown this when I was uh, fairly uh, young, probably late teens, um, the old timers would use pine tar soap. And that's uh, one of the reasons why I uh, make pine tar soap uh, to this day is because pine tar soap is a good home remedy because uh, that pine tar in uh, there helps with uh, skin conditions. So, uh, and that's basically what poison ivy is, is a skin condition. So uh, you pretty much want to treat uh, poison ivy like a burn and uh, you want to keep it as clean as possible and you want to... Um, not get anything into it because you can develop a nasty infection um, in a uh, open poison ivy rash so you want to uh, um, keep it clean keep it open so air can get to it and uh, just not uh, you're not going to want to if you got a bad case of poison ivy on your hands and your wrists you don't want to go out and work in the garden is kind of what i'm telling you so uh, anyway that's just some strategies and some stuff that i keep around uh to prevent poison ivy and you can get poison ivy year round like i said um you want to avoid those vines and those leaves in the summertime and you definitely want to avoid those berries in the uh, winter time and i'm actually going to put a link in the description i found a really good uh photograph of what those uh berries uh, look like online i'm going to put a link for that in the uh, 
description so you guys can uh, get a good look at uh, what those uh, look like. But anyway, this is Modern Refugee. Appreciate all my subscribers out there. Hope uh, you guys get a little information, a little entertainment out of my videos. And uh, stay away from that poison ivy, man. It's bad stuff. You guys take care.